har me hearties, it's that time again. Shira me timbers, splice the main cell, grab your paintbrush. It's time for that lazy pirate man. Har har! Hi there. See, I painted so many War of the Roses Peter Pig models over the last couple of months. I thought this would be a good opportunity to, sh to give you a step by step guide to how I paint these models. So, what I've done is set up a archer and I'll show you the steps I do to get them painted. Right then, first off, this model is undercoated in white. Then I get some Citadel Colours Contrast Skeleton Horde and give the whole model a coat. Now, we haven't got to be too careful at this point because we're given this is just like a base wash for the whole miniature. So we're going to liberally slosh this on. Making sure it gets in all the nooks and crannies of the model. There you go. Anywhere it seems to have pulled a little bit too much. Just give it a quick dab. There we go. There we go. Right. We'll let that dry and come back to the next stage. Right then, next up, we move on to the flesh for that. I'm this using this Vallejo flat flesh. So again. There we go, that's the flesh done. Right then, next, as we're gonna do this as a um, archer from Richard, Duke of Gloucester, we're gonna do the livery in his colors. So for that, the red, we're gonna use contrast, Blood Angels Red. too fussed if we miss any bits or go over too much at this point because we're going to hit it with a big agrax at the end anyway so what we're going to do with half is buckler and we're going to 
going to do this one. We're going to do is delivery cover. There's trousers as well. Okay, not too worried about going over. Right, and once that's dry, we move on to the other half. And for that, we're using Contrast Talisar Blue. Now, I have enjoyed using the contrast paints uh, with these water roses because they are quite bright. So, even once you've hit them with the aggrats. Pull them down a bit at the end of the process. But you still keep a very distinct colorization. If we're not too fussed about any issues at the moment of going over anywhere. Right. There we go. There we go. Right, next up, we're going to do um, the sleeves from his undergarment. So for this, I'm using another contrast paint. This time it's contrast voluptuous pink. So I do like to mix these color up. up. I do some browns and some greens and then the odd bright color like this one but again don't forget we are going to be hitting this with a agrax at the end of the process so even though this might seem a bit brighter at present it won't be that bright by the time we finish There we go. Nope. There's a bit on his arm there. There we go. Right then, next we're up to doing some of the leather work. So I do a mix. Normally these type of colours, I use brown leather by uh, Army Painter. I use made snake bite leather and sometimes I use uh, this one. Contrast paint, the core grunter fur. So this 
That's the one we're going to try on this one. So with this, we're going to hit the boots. Scabbard. It's, looks like he's got a cow underneath his helmet. So we'll do that this colour as well. Scarron handle of his knife. He's got quite high boots on, so we'll paint that right up to the dip a bit in there by his neck. That would be on the handle of the sword. You gotta be careful this next bit. So we just do his belt as well. Probably ever done it a little bit on the front, but hey, we get the gist. Again, we're not too fast about if we leave a few white bits at this stage. Anything that we don't, we fail to cover will get aggravated. So. Brown bits. Now we're already getting there now, not too far off. So next up, green ochre. By Vallejo. I use this a lot for the wood on bows and the arrows and hearts for the bills. So Liberal coat of this. Now, sometimes I might use this for the undergarments as well, or if there's any hair showing, I might do some hair. It's all about keeping the amount of different paints you use down to a minimum. So arrows. Okay, not be too fussy. It's probably just as quick for me to paint a whole strip of these guys because I normally do a strip of six at a time than it is to paint just this one. Because there's more stopping and starting when you're just doing one. 
while I'm doing a strip is literally bash all the boots, all the arrows, all the weapons. Yeah, I think we've got a majority of it covered. So, that's that bit done. Right then, next up, and quite a biggie. So all the metal parts, now we're going to hit with a black temper contrast. <laughs> so the whole area of the shield. Helmet. Pill with a sword. Any chain mail. Chain mail sleeve here. As you can see, it's liberally. Squash not on. I do find this a, a really nice base coat for doing metallics. Coming to the end of this painting now. So I haven't quite got the hang of painting on camera yet. So I still find that a bit very awkward. <laughs> Gives me quite bad hand cramp, but we'll crack it. All right, normally when I'm only doing a, sh a short color, bit like this one now, I can feel my fingers starting to go. But I think we've got it, the most of it. that done as well. Right then we're on to the last few colours now. So next up, metallics. So for that I'm using game colour, gunmetal. And I normally use either gunmetal or the plate mail depending on which type of troops it is. So you see these are levity or bowman. They're gonna get a gun mail. So again, just you bring it over where we just put the black templar. Try to be a bit more careful with the metallics. Kind of get away with the plain colours. A bit easier than. If you go off the lines with the metallics. So 
a few stages where you will have to go back and touch it up. But as I, I always say when I'm painting this type of stuff, these are gaming pieces, so you know uh, they're not display pieces. So as long as they look all right in your unit, that's fine by me. Plus the metallic is going to be a bit worn and used and it's not going to be in perfect condition is it so these are uh, levy or retainers so this is probably a retainer but these are slightly better armoured than the normal bowman. Majority of it done there. Pretty happy with that. There you go. Don't think I've missed anything. Oh, maybe a bit there. There you go. That's the metallic stem as well. I'm on to the last two stages of the painting. So a little bit of white, I'm just using the Citadel Skull White here. Just to do the fletchings of the arrows. And because he's Richard, he needs to have a, a white bore on his breast. So, all he normally do is just do, do a little white blob. Right, so that's that done. So, once that dries, then all we need to do is add the magic. I grab the shade. Right then, the last proper stage the liquid magic that is. A grank or a shade. So literally, we get a nice big brush, and we go to town on the whole model. Especially in the skin part, because we haven't put any type of. Shading on the skin. So I went to pools a bit. Right, there we go. Pull a bit much there, there we go. Right, wait for that to dry. And we'll come back. So here we go. We just finished Archer. He's a half base for when casualties are removed. So I can see I've put them on the half side first. We'll have a closer look again. Anyway, that's it for now. Cheers.